Today's word of the day comes from the book of Exodus, chapter 28, verse 2. Exodus, chapter 28, verse 2. It says, And you shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, for glory and for beauty. Amen. And you shall make holy garments for Aaron, your brother, for glory and for beauty. Amen. Praise the Lord. God is giving Moses instructions and uh, about what to do with uh, his brother and their his family and so forth. And, and this is one of the instructions here. Now, if we know Moses is also a type of Christ in the Old Testament, and so Aaron um, represents like a priest of God, we can also kind of think of this as uh, Jesus and his kingdom of priests, of uh, which he's called many of us to be. But the bottom line is really about this garments, these holy garments for glory and beauty. And I believe that's what we're going to focus today. These garments, what are they? And how do they apply to us? Praise the Lord. In Psalm 132, verse 9, it says, Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your saints shout for joy. Amen. Praise the Lord. So what's the beautiful, glorious clothing that God is looking for is righteousness. And we've said many a time here, it's not about our righteousness. It's about putting on Christ and his righteousness, trusting in his righteousness, and and Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. It was faith in God and his goodness and his sacrifice in everything that when we are clothed with that, it is a beautiful thing for God to behold. Praise the Lord. It's what gives us glory and beauty is our trust in him. Praise the Lord. Philippians chapter 3, verse 9 says, And be found in him, that is Jesus, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Amen. Praise the Lord. Again, not our righteousness, but it comes through faith in Christ and his goodness and his sacrifice. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Excuse me. Isaiah 61.10 says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation, and salvation comes through faith in him. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Praise the Lord. It is all about him. And when we're covered in him, we can come boldly through the, to the throne of grace, and uh, and be beautiful in the eyes of God. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, I just remembered that uh, jo- Joseph was wearing uh, her robe, but when he trusted in himself and ran from Potiphar's wife, he lost his robe because there was no trusting in the Lord. It was trusting in his own ability to save himself. But then again, uh, he learned his lesson, and he was reclothed and brought to the king, Pharaoh, and given his responsibilities. Praise the Lord. Now, we look at uh, Luke 15, verses 20 through 22, talking about the prodigal son. And here was where we've been talking today about through our struggles, we come to that place of righteousness and put on that robe. We know the prodigal son uh, left. He, He trusted in his own idea of what his life should look like. He left his father, took his gifts, and wasted them all. But then when he came to the end of all of that and he realized that his idea of what life should be was not producing anything good and that he recognized his father knew better, he rose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Backsliders, unbelievers, all coming to the father. And the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Repentance is another thing God gives us. And when we come to repentance and start to trust in our heavenly father and not ourselves, this is what happened. The father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. Amen. God closes us with that robe of righteousness. When we put our trust in him, praise the Lord. In Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 through 17, 
we see the culmination of all of this. After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could number, <clears throat> of all na nations and tribes, peoples and tongues, standing before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands. There they go. They've got the robes of righteousness on them. And crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And the, all the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen, Blessed, blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are these arrayed in these white robes, and where did they come from? And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. It's through tribulation, it's through struggles that we come to trust in the, in the Lord. And that is how our robes are made white and clean through the blood and the trust in his sacrifice. That is how we get our robe of righteousness. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will dwell among them. They shall neither hunger any more nor thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them nor any heat. For the Lamb who is in the midst of the throne will shepherd them and lead them to living fountains of waters, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are the one making holy garments for us, for glory and for beauty in your sight. It is nothing we could have done on our own. It is simply your love that you have done everything, and you will finish this work, and you will give us all robes of clean white linen washed in the blood of Jesus Christ after we go through whatever tribulation we need to go to to learn to trust in you and not in ourselves or anything or anyone else but you alone. This is your work. This is your promise. You will do it and we will praise you forever and ever. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. That is our word of the day. Amen. Praise the Lord.